thank you for giving me the opportunity to be in a course which we thought many years ago should be there when we were in this expert group really meeting face to face in Brussels. One of the ideas were then that something like this should happen in the future when we thought about uh, how digital youth work should look like, what uh, youth workers should be. We found that, uh, of course, something like a mindset uh, towards uh, these ideas were important, uh, but also to know the skills, to know the technical basics, but to be a trusted person for the young people to work on that. So it's really great that this became reality and that I can be here and actually talk about uh, the topic that uh, I deal in my daily work with. I'm working at the Safe Internet Center in in Austria. Safe internet centers do exist in 30 European countries. We always consist uh, of something like an awareness center. That's where I'm working. There we do awareness work, we do workshops, we do publications in different uh, sorts. And then in each of our countries, we also have a helpline young people on these topics and a hotline where people can report for instance, child pornography content. And if you're in one of the German speaking countries, and I saw that some of you are here in these hotlines, you also can report Wiederbetätigung in German language countries. We know it is Nazi stuff, which is forbidden in our countries, but not in other European countries. So these are the areas where I work with. And if you want to know more and find more about where your, where your uh, Safe Internet Center is, use the website Better Internet for Kids. Dot EU, you can find uh, your local safe internet center there. And uh, this website is also very helpful for you because you will find lots of uh, content, videos, material, lesson plans, more in the school area because I think more of our safe internet centers work in the uh, field of schools. Uh, such as we do working also in the youth work. And this is not so common in most countries, but you will get good ideas in your local language, I'm sure. So use this website and go then to the resources and you will find lots of stuff on the topic of online safety. And if you ask me, why is it called Better Internet for Kids? And we're dealing with online safety. This, to one extent, an historical reason. We were used to be called safer internet centers in the past, but now our focus has changed and we're actually trying to promote an internet which is as a nice place. And whereas in the past, we look more on digital tools, how to prevent things, filters and stuff like that. So from technical protection, now we move to empowerment. And I think this is why the name is uh, much better that way. Yes, and when I was a member of this expert group, I think we, we ended our work in 2017. We figured out which, which are the learning topics that youth workers should work on. And online safety was one of them. And of course, it is also in the European Digital Competence Catalog. And if we look at what is actually included in this online safety, I'm sure that you will know these areas from the technical side, protecting devices, protecting personal and data privacy, but also protecting the environment and very important, also protecting health and well-being. And today I will not focus so much on the technical part and also not so much on the data privacy part, because I'm sure you have lots of that in your course, but I will try to find examples for ideas which also include other areas because the online safety, you cannot just look at them. It is always uh, has to do with communication, with digital content creation, of course, with lots of problem solving. And also very important part is, of course, information and data literacy. You cannot really take that online safety topics without all the other rest. And just to... No. 
just to, to give you an idea, of course, we are much in, in, in many areas of digital youth work where people work with young people, use it as a tool, use it as content, use it as an environment where you talk to young people about the topics. The area where you can talk about or deal with online safety is really broad, and I would like to give you a few examples. Let's start with classical topic on digital privacy. You had a few of you had in now in this last uh, session, the menti.com about the digital footprint. And that is, that is a, a checklist actually that I know that some people use in the work with young people to go through actually to do digital detox, you could say. I said now, since this is getting such a, a commonly used name, get rid of the digital garbage or get uh, rid of your digital past, uh, which you don't use anymore. Let's start with this. I know uh, some people who use this as a checklist, who, who take the young people and really do one step after the other. And so you can do that either in a youth center or with just hanging around with young people, also in the Discord channel, wherever. Just use your device, then show them, talk to them where they could delete cookies, which browsers they use, why they use this browser and not another one, and why it is important to, to delete unused apps uh, on your smartphones. That is, of course, because all these unused apps also transfer data and you can never know which apps are when hacked by whom and which of your information gets leaked to where. So in, in this case, in this sense, it is uh, important also to delete former profiles in social networks. We this year had for Safe Internet Day, we made a survey in Austria on young people, how many accounts in social networks they had in the past, which they cannot access anymore, where there is content out there somewhere in the internet. And sometimes this might be embarrassing stuff. So we had situations for young people where they, I don't know, they went to a social network when they were really kids, like 11, 12, 13 years old. And then when they grew older, they tried to apply for a job. These old accounts suddenly appeared. And of course, they couldn't access it anymore because, as you all know, young people never used email up to COVID-19. I think that has changed it maybe a little bit. The email from the past to access, this is uh, really difficult. That is why it is really important if, if you feel, okay, I think I, I stop using this social network, then please get rid of your profile, delete the content, and not just only delete the app on your phone because that won't work. Your content and your profile will be still there. I'm sure this is not so much for you, but for the young people to work with. Maybe for you, more important is clear out your cloud services and check what you uh, stored somewhere in some areas on the internet. These deleting such content is important because you also never know who uh, gets access to such data and especially if you store data on on the young people you're working with for instance a name list because you had an excursion together with them and in this name list is also stored what they eat and if they eat pork or not and if you have the name and the information if a person eats pork or not then you can actually uh, get information usually about the religious background and for your European law, this is uh, under the sensible data for a person, and here you should be really careful not to store that. So go through your cloud services, check what you have stored to all your young people and delete that from time to time. That is something really important for you at, as a youth worker. Check your privacy settings or privacy settings, whichever pronunciation you prefer. That is something which you can do with young people. I think many of uh, our safe internet centers actually have guidelines in your local language how to do that on which networks that are used in your country. 
And the last uh, thing here on this list is deactivate Bluetooth or Wi-Fi when you don't use it. I guess you maybe all heard of some of these horror stories that somebody hacked into a machine due, due to the fact that Bluetooth was open or Wi-Fi was open. I'm sure that most of these the horror stories might have reason to, to exist, but uh, it might be also that some of them are good stories, but you never know. So it is a good idea to deactivate the Wi-Fi when you don't use it. Bluetooth at the moment, I personally, for instance, do not deactivate because I use such a Stop Corona app in order to get informed if I uh, have contact with a corona positive person. So this is something I'm not doing at the moment, but Wi-Fi deactivating is also good for your, on the smartphone for the battery. Let's go to one point, which quite a lot of social, uh, um, a lot of youth organizations I realized in the past do actually use these are takeovers takeover on social media channels if it is Instagram or it, if it is TikTok in the past it was also Facebook where I saw such takeovers and such a takeover is actually a very good situation or a starting point to talk about lots of safety issues because one thing is of course whom do you trust enough to pass over a, a password? The, the information about your profile, usually that is done like that, that you get the, the profile information and you log in your own phone. Some organizations do it differently. They ask the young people to send images to them and then they post it. But I quite often uh, realize that also organizations really do real takeovers by passing on this information. So then you have the topic, what is a good password? Today, a good password is already consisting of 16 digits, something nobody ever can remember. So I hope you all have heard of password managers, which uh, a, a possibility to remember such uh, different passwords, because what you also need to do is actually have a different password in every of your accounts that you have, that if you share passwords, it's good to share it in such a password manager so that uh, people cannot uh, change them and you cannot uh, get it back uh, to some extent. So I know lots of organizations who use uh, also a password manager in order to manage, uh, to get in the accounts they use in the whole organization. But such a takeover um, is of course also good for your organization from a communicational point of view, the bonding with the organization or giving young people a voice is something really important. And now back to the online safety, it is a good uh, spot to talk about copyrights and portrait rights. Copyright, when I use a picture from another person that I didn't take, Am I allowed to do that? Do I have the right to use this image or whatever content from another person? Can I share it publicly? And I'm sure that, that the Creative Commons is a good license for this or public, public uh, domain. I'm being asked if I can uh, recommend a liable password manager. We usually are using last. There are more of that. If you really want to know in your country, in your area, go to your computer magazines. They usually have a good uh, overview of which are reliable password managers. Most of the big ones that are around reliable in the sense that is something you have to take care that they are encrypted. And it is not only that the, my password is encrypted on, on their servers, but also the, pro, the transfer process is encrypted. That is uh, something that is really important in a password manager. But which one it is, look on your local computer magazines. I have the feeling this is in most countries the most uh, trustful place to find the right one because there are cultural differences. And in some countries, this is rather used and it also depends which system you have. And if you have several different, if you have a computer, laptop, uh, mobile devices, which one 
uh, suits you best and how big is the crowd that you're sharing passwords with. So these would be uh, the things that you should take in account. I also heard uh, that Google Password Manager is a good option in, the, in this sense. Something which we found a lot, as I said, we had Safe Internet Day in the beginning of February. And as you can imagine, Safe Internet Day was different this year than in all the past years. Usually youth organizations, for instance, youth information organizations do uh, some events on that day. They uh, do some quizzes or uh, ask young people to come to their organization organizations, they do some events, or there are some counseling possibilities. Of course, this year was completely different. Everything went online. And what we saw from quite a lot of youth organizations, from youth centers to youth clubs to different uh, smaller organizations where things like this year information campaigns on instagram or tiktok so social media tips as i now called it but we saw that throughout also in other countries here just some examples of austria but that was not something that was only in austria and i talked to to, to one organization who did one of such a campaign they usually consist of several images on several topics what they did in uh, preparation of these things uh, that were posted online, they actually worked with the young people what topics are interesting for them, uh, what they think are important. Young people can be included in this, in, in actually giving them a space to find the real necessary and important topics. And something that we found also quite a lot uh, this year, here also a few examples, as I saw before from the three German speaking safe internet centers from the Luxembourg, the German and the Austrian, an example. These are treasure hunt, digi rallies, or Action Bound is actually a, a software, an app on the phone, which is really great to use in, in different environments. It's a classical example for digital youth work. You can work on specific topics. But here in this example, it was used for internet safety things. The Digi Rally was on a specific topic on, I think, the year before in the Safe Internet Forum. The German colleagues from ClickSafe had one action bound, which was only an online treasure hunt on COVID-19 misleads and lies. And the Austrian Safe Internet Center had just something on interesting tools that you could find on the Safe Internet website. And also here an example from a Muslim youth organization in Austria who actually has a, a treasure hunt in the city itself. So Action Bound is something um, that you can use on topics, but also out in the field on in your region. It is uh, really very good to use app. If you if we look in the field of film, video or generating media stuff, there are lots of examples throughout Euro, Europe where videos are being produced. And of course, this is very important for the young people who take part to reflect their personal situation. It is good for the community building, but it usually is then also a social media campaign. And it is a lot about media skills. And if we talk about internet safety, of course, in such a video, you would talk about portrait rights. What is okay to post of another person? Even if you do a documentary on a person, you have to take care if all the material here shown for a person could that be embarrassing for this person in the future even if it is an arty and really a great video could uh, that uh, be held against this person? Could it be, could it create as a problem for the participant in this? So youth workers really have to uh, actually, by preparing such, such uh, things like video or also games, but it doesn't matter what kind of uh, content it is, you really have to think about a lot of online safety uh, topics for the participating young people that you train media skills is, of course, the good part. 
Yes, and uh, something rather, let's say, classical thing in in not only youth work, but also in school, if you talk about online activities and if you have a starting point on talking about online safety, it's usually this media diary. And you can do that in very different styles. It can be drawings and it can be apps you use to present material about yourself. It can be just on specific topics, count the time that you spend online or uh, just try to uh, find out for yourself why something online is uh, really important. And this is usually a very good start to talk about. Is it too much time you spend online? When is it too much time that you spend online? What could you do differently? And what alternatives do you have? And of course, in these COVID-19 times, this is not a very easy answer i know from all the parents evening we're having in these days that this is something bothering a lot of grown-ups but also a lot of young people because i think they see for themselves that they spend quite a lot of time online we do parents evening at the moment online like in zoom like this year and we do it for schools and i must say they are I would say even more productive, even more with better outcome, because parents tend to ask more in these in online environments. They have less this fear of that other people will say, haha, I knew that your kid is whatever, as I feel in, in, in face-to-face parents even. So I have the feeling actually that these online parents even are a good thing that came out of this corona time. Very interesting is when Instagram, I don't know if you know that Instagram is offering you such a a thing that is saying how many time you spend on Instagram in the app itself. And when that came out, we had one of our youth panels and we discussed, everybody checked, uh, that was the time when everybody was only on Instagram from the young people in our country and they checked and were really shocked how much time they spent on Instagram. And I also looked on Instagram and actually that I would be longer on Instagram than the phone showed me that I was in reality. So I was uh, a little bit shocked that I was much less time online and the young people were shocked that they were much longer on time. So it can be an eye opener in both directions. It depends what you probably expect. And we discussed a few days ago, actually, what is uh, too long and uh, is three hours, if you're three hours online just for fun parts, is that too long or is that not too long? And, And I think there is no correct answer for that. And everybody has to really figure out in their daily routines what would be too long So that's why such a media diary is a good reflection tool, actually, to find the right balance for for you and yourself. Yeah, exactly. That is, Chris, you're writing that when youth work goes digital, it is hard to differentiate between the amount of time on social media is just entertainment and to what amount is engaging with young, with youth workers and educational content. And I think that is the dilemma we are facing at the moment. Not only we young people, if they have online school, they actually suddenly have to spend on one device their leisure time and their school time or work time and to learn how to actually find the right balance between the two areas is quite necessary. And I would say, and maybe I come to the next point, is if you can engage young people in doing something actively, like taking pictures, like doing videos, doing other things really in a creative area, then I would assume that it is not so much waste of time when they are online watching the series, their favorite series, the 20th time or so. But that's a personal maybe point of view, but I think to make young people use a digital tool actively and then look at all these online safety questions at this time is actually a good way to go. And we 
time is only one aspect at the moment. It is what content you do, what you do, how you engage with other people. If you do actually, if you have an impact as a young person, all that I think is much more important than the time spent online. I think that is also a big uh, change that COVID-19 time brought to us. Maybe at some stage, our online area will be over. And we worked, and I know not only us, but in in quite some countries, there is a good tradition in doing online topics in offline youth work. So here you see a picture outdoor events with a youth organization in parks, where we had different things like treasure hunts or quizzes with prizes in within big events but uh, also only consultations on privacy settings for instance the kids came and we checked together the phone if they had the privacy settings in the social networks if they had uh, the in-app purchases deactivated and stuff like that just in the park out uh, there that is would be also maybe a completely different possibility to to talk about online safety but in an offline environment maybe one day we will be able to do that again and what we found a lot and obviously not only here in austria but also in other countries since i heard it in in, in this first mentimeter group is uh, discord we saw really lots of new discord uh, servers in different areas doing moving youth work online and creating a space for that and discord seemed to be a good area and we and I'm sure it is. It is quite a place where you can look at many of these online safety topics. But if we are in this topic of online safety, be aware in Discord that please do not share any personal sensible data about young people. Encourage them to use nicknames. Encourage them not to write about uh, their really personal experiences because of what we know from discord is that in their these little things that we all agree at some stage they say that they can monitor the content and they can use the content and they can pass it on to third parties we don't know if they do it we're not sure of that but if you use discord and i think it's a very good space to use in youth work so i would encourage uh, people to do that but please be aware of data protection of the young people and very good, of course, it is for problem solving to talk about uh, the netiquette, how to behave uh, with each other and things like that. So I think that's why such an area like Discord is really good. And since we are also in this field of online safety and interestingly, in the online safety on the uh, European digital competence framework, environmental topics are also included in this area. That's why I, I wanted to also let you focus a bit on on the topic of digitalization and climate change. We looked uh, a little bit into that because our young people actually forced us to do that. They wanted to know if they actually do something for the climate change by using their phones. And the answer is not so um, easy, actually, we found. We found several things where you actually, as a person, can do something, where you can be active against the climate change, where you can uh, use digital tools in order to have a climate-friendly behavior but it can be also a bit of a problem. And for instance, all the streaming uh, services are a bit unclear, but there is this debate if it is actually, if you watch Netflix, how many hours if you watch Netflix is equal to one flight in your your vacation. There is no easy, easy answer because Netflix usually is mirroring the content in your local country 
in a data center and it depends on how this data center in your country is actually is equipped with old machines or new machines in the energy saving machines or not and that is not easy to find out but one thing is for sure netflix is really data intensive and what you can do if you watch uh, netflix really watch it on small screens uh, then it is less data intensive and if you watch it then really watch it don't do five things next to it so focus on it and don't leave it just running in the back there you could use normal tv if you have that still available as well and this is uh, actually what you see here on this screen is something that we talked was a result in our talk with the young people we have several challenges in this area because one thing is what can i do and how can i find out what uh, would make an impact whom do i believe not very easy to find out but one thing is for sure you can do please use your digital tools longer limit your time for instance for some heavily data exchanging apps like Netflix or use it for the, the big area of sharing economy as we call it today like sharing clothes like having zero waste initiatives or travel communities and stuff like that and this uh, thing is set a goal that you can achieve plan concrete actions look back did I succeed don't fall back in old habits. This was by our young people and the dinosaurs next to it because they said, because we don't want to be dinosaurs and die out. We can change it and we can make a difference. Something that from our work with young people.